I'm Rob. A few weeks ago, I did a video on tooling marks for CNC machines and what can cause those tooling marks. There were several people who commented that a dust shoe like mine could not cause those tooling marks if I had a rigid machine. I have no illusions that my machine is some great industrial machine, but I also believe that for a hobby machine, it's pretty good. So I decided I should try to improve my machine to get better results. The first step was to tighten every nut and bolt I could find on my machine. So basically, I was doing maintenance. This is something I admittedly have not done a very good job with in the past. The second thing I did was add a cross brace down to the bracket that holds the dust shoe. This should make the dust shoe a little more stable, but since it's not attached to the spindle itself, this probably won't make that much of a difference. And the third thing I did was add a thrust bearing to my Z-axis. I've been told by multiple people who I trust that the stepper motor for the Z-axis is not made to support that much weight. Now, in the truth, I've had it this way seven years now, and it's worked pretty darn good. So I'm not convinced that's an issue, but the whole reason for this video is to explore ways to make my machine more rigid. I added two collars to my threaded rod. Inside those are two thrust bearings. And then between that is this H bracket that's attached to my X carriage. And here is the new thrust bearing in action. It's a little easier to visualize when you can see it running. First I'm running slow here, and then we'll go fast up and down a few times. Here are the parts I use for the thrust bearing. And if you look closely, you can see I busted my production budget making this video for you today. Now for the moment of truth, do these changes actually affect anything? And the answer is not much. Since the changes I made to my machine did not help with those tooling lines, I decided I would do a test to see how much force that dust shoot actually does exert. I got out my handy dandy kitchen scale and I cut a little bracket to go on top of that with some ridges so the bristles the dust shoe would, would catch it when it goes across. So in my tests, I saw up to 10 pounds pressure that exerted and consistently six pounds and above. So after some time to reflect on the results, I'm imagining someone with a 10 pound bag of flour that arbitrarily was pressing down and then not pressing down on my spindle. And I think 10 pounds of force would cause a fraction of an inch change and cause those tooling lines. So in the end, I think this dust shoe is really the culprit on why I'm getting such bad results. I mentioned this in the previous video, but I stacked the deck against my CNC machine. I did an 80% step over for the tool path. I pushed it to 150 inches per minute, which is faster than normally go. I found a dust shoe with the longest, stiffest bristles I could find with the shortest bit I had, and it caused that deflection. I know in the future I will never use that dust shoe with that bit, and I know how to not get those results when I want to. So in the end, I understand my machine, I understand how to get good results, and hopefully you can do the same thing with your machine. If you enjoyed this or found it useful, please like and subscribe. Thank you, everyone.